Record Store Day, April 2023, just happened a couple days ago at the time of this recording, and I got something pretty damn cool, and we're going to talk about it on this episode of Todd's Turntable Talk. to another episode of Todd's Turntable Talk. And before we get started, like always, I want to remind everybody to make sure to hit that subscribe button as well as the bell notification to let you know whenever a new episode drops here on our channel. Now, <clears throat> Record Store Day, in my opinion, as I've talked about on this sh channel before, has become very oversaturated. And a lot of times, because they have, you know, at least two a year now, one of the two Record Store Days stuff is pretty lackluster and then the other one stuff you might get some cool stuff <clears throat> but this drop in april has got to be one of the most impressive drops i've seen in a minute since um the one where foo fighters put out the Bee Gees cover record this year there was some amazing stuff <clears throat> we got a new uh van halen live album which was the right here right now with Sammy Hagar era that has never been on vinyl. We got a new Pearl Jam record. But the thing I wanted, I have been a humongous Kiss fan for my whole life. And Eric Carr, who was the second drummer in Kiss, who, who replaced Peter Chris, the original drummer, had gone into the studio over time and recorded a bunch of music, songs he had written. A lot of them were, um, were demos for our various Kiss albums. So Bruce went into the studio, they unearthed other songs that no one's ever heard before, and they released Eric Carr's solo album, Rockology, on a 2LP vinyl set. Now, the cool thing about the presentation of this, and we're going to open it in a minute and show you what it looks like. Back in 1978, Kiss <clears throat> released four solo albums, one album per member. And it was only that member on the album with a band of their choosing. And they all released their own individual solo albums. And they all had a, a matching covers. So to show you an example, the example, here's two of them. Here's Ace Fraley's, which in my opinion was the best one that, that was released of the four. Ace's was amazing. It has New York Groove, Rip It Out, um, Snowblind is awesome. It's, it's, it's a great record. And then here's Paul Stanley's which is, uh, <clears throat> as you can tell, the same theme for both covers. Very similar. With Eric Carr's album, they went and did the same same look, and you've got Eric Carr having a solo album. I mean, how cool is that? For any KISS fan, that's super cool. <clears throat> and I love that it's on a special edition vinyl that we're going to look at in a minute. Um, and even the back... See if I can show you here. So here's the back of the Kiss solo records, what they look like. Oh, the glare is making it a little difficult. Let me take it out of the plastic. Okay, here's the back of Paul's solo album. Right here. And when you look at Eric's on the back, it's the same layout as Paul's or anybody else's. The only difference is... Um, they put all the credits for each individual song on the back as well. And it's two LPs instead of one. So we're going to crack this open here. And what I love is that instead of a hype sticker over plastic, it's got this spine advertisement. And I apologize if you can hear the noise. There's maintenance people doing whatever it is they're doing. Um, and we take it out of the plastic here. I love that you get to keep the hype sticker because... The hype sticker is just another piece. So with that taken out, you get the full look of what it looks like. And it's really cool because <clears throat> it's the same font for the name as Paul's, only instead of Kiss, it's Eric's name. Now, <clears throat> Eric, um, 
Eric's album doesn't have the Kiss logo literally anywhere, and it's probably on purpose because Kiss would probably want some money. So we're gonna break it open here, and inside, there's a cool collectible, we'll get to that in a minute, but inside we've got the records. Um, disc one here has this really cool picture of Bruce and Eric together. A really awesome picture there. And it was, uh, <clears throat> it has a message from Loretta Carr, Eric's sister. <clears throat> I'm not going to read the whole thing. It's, uh, you can, you can find it online, I'm sure. I'm just more showing you what it looks like. But yeah, it's really cool. And then the first vinyl inside is so cool. It is an orange with splatter. And you got Eric's fox makeup on one side and then the track listing for both sides on the other i i love colored vinyl some different like variations and stuff like that <clears throat> to me it is so fun uh then we have disc two same as the other disc on the one side and then on the other side we have about the two bands that eric was in before kiss and here's a shot of Eric playing with Kiss behind the drums in a, some stadium somewhere. Um, he was in two bands, The Cellarman from 66 to 69 and Creation from 73 to 77. And two of the songs on this are from those previous bands. One being uh, their cover of Obla Di Obla Da by the, by the Beatles and uh, another one being a song called Stranger. So that's really cool too. And then this record... Is we got a clear vinyl with, again, the fox on one side and the track list on the other. <clears throat> it's really funny also because... So on the, the back of the album, they had... They have listed when certain songs were performed or released and of the last two songs obla di obla da the beatles one it says performed by the cellarman in 1967. now that's funny because the song didn't come out until 1968. the beatles white album was released in 68 so i'm pretty sure they didn't perform this a year before the record came out someone didn't fact check uh their their uh their stuff completely um but it's still cool, and I'm not going to, you know, it's not a big deal. And then the last thing inside, and I think this is super awesome. So the original Kiss Soul albums came with with a poster. Each one had its own poster, four all together, of course, which looked like this. So the thing they included inside this one, just like the other ones to put right with them, is they made a poster for Eric. I'm back up here so you can see the whole thing a solo album poster for Eric Carr. That's really cool. And that um, is the record, what it looks like, what's inside. Um, it retails for 40 bucks, $39.95. Um, I don't know if you can still snag it because, you know, record store day, a lot of people, you know, go and get the stuff at eight in the morning and that's... And they have it, you know. <clears throat> but if you can find it or track it down, uh, it's $39.95, 40 bucks. So we're going to pop this on the turntable. Because I haven't even had a chance to listen to this yet. So I'm going to pop it on the turntable back here and listen to it. And then come back and tell you what I think about the record. Okay, so after listening to the album, um, it's cool. Um, it's really interesting to see what could have been as far as if he would have, you know, not passed from cancer and would have made music more. But the thing I just, I don't like about stuff like this is putting out incomplete songs and demos that 
don't even have lyrics. I mean, there's a couple of songs on here like uh, Heavy Metal Baby or Mad Dog, You Make Me Crazy, stuff like that, where it's just him going, meh, 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 Like, there's no lyrics because he didn't have any yet. And he's just kind of mumbled, like, trying to get a melody down. And while I appreciate that, um, as a listening experience, it's not that enjoyable for me but the songs on here that are finished are awesome um eyes of love somebody's waiting both really awesome songs tiara is kind of fun a uh, little romance tune but i would have almost preferred a single disc with just the finished tunes um as opposed to here's a million half done demos and a few completed songs the effort and everything they did to make this happen is really cool. And it's, it's nice that Eric gets his own, like, day in the sunshine, so to speak. A very cool collectible, a very cool uh, piece of history. But honestly, just not a great album. Like, I'd like to say... None of my opinions are factual. All music is subjective. There's no right or wrong answer to what people like. I love the presentation of it. I love the songs that are completed songs. You know, but as a album album, not so much. But definitely would recommend checking it out if you're a KISS fan. So that's going to do it for this episode of Todd's Turntable Talk. And we will be back next time with more fun reviews. And also... I've been toying around the idea of just showing my collection, um, an al a letter of the alphabet at a time, going through each record I have and talk about them and show you what I have and why I have them and things like that. So look out for that series that he's starting pretty soon. And we'll see you in another episode of Todd's Turn Table Talk.